the shuttle Atlantis, poised for a second try at a launch. I'm Stephen Govan at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The infamous Florida weather could play a key role in tomorrow's launch. I'll have a live report. I'm Liz Exon at the CUNY Homes Public Housing Apartments, where officials are trying to crack down on drug traffic. I'll have a live report. And these nurses are among the thousands being honored today. We'll tell you why. You're watching Channel 13, KTRK-TV, Houston. Live at 5 with Bob Boudreaux. Melody Lawson. The Sports with Tim Melton. Now, live at 5. Now, Bob Boudreau and Melanie Lawson. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Live at Five, this midweek edition. It's poised and ready to fly on the second try. We're talking, of course, about the countdown for tomorrow's launch of the space shuttle Atlantis going smoothly this afternoon. So far, so good. NASA officials say both the shuttle and its crew, as well as the cargo, a very important cargo, are all set. It looks like only one thing could stand in the way. Stephen Govain is in Florida. He joins us live by satellite right now, and that one thing Mother Nature, eh, Stephen? Uh, that's right. Uh, we'll have uh, more information on the weather in just a moment. But first, let me say that the crew is very optimistic that uh, they'll have uh, something uh, to talk about tomorrow in terms of a launch and everyone else here at uh, Cape uh, Canaveral. When the crew of the uh, space shuttle Atlantis left Ellington Field near Houston yesterday, the crew commander, Dave Walker, said this time it's for sure. Uh, last week, a mechanical problem stopped the countdown with 31 seconds to go before launch. Engineers uh, here have made a quick fix of the troublesome hydrogen recirculation pump in the shuttle's engine compartment. Uh, NASA chief of space flight says everything is ready to go. It's a go, and they are, they're uh, healthy and wealthy and going to be wiser when they fly, uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow. And of course, uh, the the main part of the mission, the Magellan spacecraft, is in the payload bay and uh, still planning uh, its trip to Venus. Can't really... Launch is set for 12.48 p.m. Houston time tomorrow afternoon. Bob and Melanie? This probe, this Magellan probe to Venus, the interplanetary, is, uh, is critical in timing because if we don't get a launch by a specific date, there's a lengthy wait period before you can do it again, is there not? Yes, uh, the launch date, uh, the end of the possible launch dates for the Magellan probe is uh, May 28th, uh, the end of this month. And if uh, they don't get it off uh, by that time, uh, Magellan is going to have to sit uh, closeted for another two years before there is a proper, con uh, a proper distance between Earth and Venus for uh, them to send the probe again. Uh, so it is a very timely situation. However, uh, NASA officials said earlier today that uh, they were glad if they were going to have some mechanical problems, some technical problems that they had at the beginning of this uh, opportunity to launch Magellan. So I gather at this point then, Stephen, they are not looking at the worst case scenario, that it won't be able to go up in time. No, not at this point. Uh, right now, uh, things are pretty hopeful for tomorrow. I said we were going to talk a little bit about the weather. A few days ago, there was uh, an optimistic uh, outlook for let's try a 60 to 70 percent chance that uh, weather would not be a factor for the launch. Now it's uh, reduced down to a definite 60 percent chance that uh, the weather will be good enough for launch. Uh, they put it in reverse terms. They call it a 40 percent chance that the weather will interfere with the launch out here. Uh, but everybody's optimistic. The, uh, the hardware, the shuttle uh, is ready to go and uh, the countdown is going smoothly. Right now the sky looks pretty blue behind you. How is the weather today and what is the prediction for tomorrow? Weather is fine right now, except it's a little bit windy. I don't know if the uh, the wind uh, meets the specific launch criteria at this time. It seems to me that it does. Uh, if they were to program a launch right now, I think that uh, the cloud cover right now would be su sufficiently good so that uh, they could have a launch. And tomorrow, the weather could be uh, deteriorating toward uh, launch time at uh, 1248 Houston time early in the afternoon. but. Uh, Everybody here thinks that uh, there is, a, like I say, uh, at least a 60% chance that they'll get it off. All right, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Stephen, thank you. Let's talk about the war on drugs. A new target in the city this afternoon as city and county attorneys are working together now to tackle the problem of drug dealing in two public housing projects in Houston. One of those locations being targeted for a crackdown is an apartment complex. It's just south of the downtown area. It's known as CUNY Homes. We want to go now to reporter Liz Exxon, who joins us live from CUNY Homes with more. 
Yes, city and county attorneys will be... City and county as a result of the Houston crackdown? Um, yes, I think it's part of the overall effort out here. Uh, I've been out here with police before at night uh, who have patrolled the area. In fact, the South Central substation is right ne near here, and police just feel like they can't tackle this problem alone. They might see some drug dealers out here, but a lot of times they're holding the crack in their hands. When police drive up, the dealers drop it on the ground, and uh, they can't make a bus. So it's a problem that police just can't tackle. it takes to keep the Texas Medical Center operating. Want to guess? I know, because oh, I see the okay. copy here. All right, well, don't look, <laughs> don't look. look. It's about 8,000, believe it or not. That's a lot of folks, women and men, who are honored at a special celebration at the old Shamrock Hilton Ballroom today. Our medical reporter, Mary Ellen Conway, was there for this report. Mary Ellen, thank you thank very you. much. Appreciate that. And thanks to those folks who work so hard at the medical center in the nursing profession. Looking at money matters, the brokers were working hard today, but... Dow Jones lost ground for a fourth consecutive day. The index fell more than nine points to close today at 2393.69 on a volume of 172 million shares, exactly the same as yesterday. Oil futures, though, showing an increase up 30 cents on the New York Mercantile for West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil. Closing quotation for June delivery, $20.10 per barrel. We've been hearing all this week about the stars both in front of and behind the camera. Today, we learn about the magic Lots of magic in movie making. We'll show you some of it when Live at Five continues. Say, didn't you put a new roof on your house last year? Yeah, Sears did it. Gutters, too. Sears? <laughs> if ever you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Discount Tire Company. Okay, this week on Live at Five, we've introduced you to the movie stars. We've introduced you to all the folks who make the movies behind the cameras. Yes. Well, we tried to do that. Well, we tried to. We tried to do that. And in the final showing of Lights, Camera, Houston today, we want you to look at the real magic of movie making. As Deborah Wrigley found out, it may change the way you look at films forever. Look carefully at the work going on here because it's uh, going to result in disaster, or at least that's the plan. Actually, we probably want to cut this one first, get this out right away. And, oh, it's called a special one. effect, and it's what movie customers demand of their action movies. By the time this one, called Dark Angel, wraps up shooting in Houston, several police cars will have been exploded, a building nearly destroyed, and countless rounds of ammo spent. Starts here, loading powder, shaping it into, yes, you can believe your eyes, bombs. That's the chemistry behind the effect, like the flash for a nuclear wrist weapon carried by a not so friendly extraterrestrial. There's a needle coming out in front of this, and and a, and a tube like a snake. And, uh, All right, I'll take this side, you take the other side. The bigger the bomb, the bigger the blast. Here, it's a mock Houston police car that will be sacrificed. What makes this stunt especially touchy is that someone will be in the car when it blows. There's a contingency plan just in case. Who do I have safety in the back of the car? Gerard and Dave, I believe. Gerard. It's a one-take stunt, and once it's set in motion, there is no turning back. Around 2 in the morning, near the old Amtrak station, the cameras begin to roll, the car begins to move, and everyone holds their breath. It's a print, and the stuntman will get a $4,000 bonus for his trouble. The camera, though, didn't fare as well. So we lost one camera. We got the shot. Thanks for looking. Keeps on ticking. Good German engineering. Right. The Germans. Let's hope. Be careful with that one. We know this as the Franklin. Bank building and Dark Angel. It's one more battleground between the drug dealing aliens and the good Houston cop. The amount of firepower placed in the building is a trade secret, but as you're about to see, it's a lot. Fire 
that reached across six lanes of Main Street, an explosion that lasted for all of 1.5 seconds without truly destroying anything. That's where the magicians come in. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say it's destruction, but to destroy something in, in a safe environment and in a controlled environment is actually a, it's a creating an illusion, which is a magical in a, in a way. Just like the movies, where you can see part of your own city on film and see the good guys beat the bad guys all in about two hours on a big screen. But when you see it, think about the people and the work that created this. There's a little bit of magic in what they do, too. Deborah Wrigley, 13 Eyewitness News. I'd like to see a lot more of that kind of production. Houston, and we invite you to be sure to watch tonight at 6 o'clock when we'll bring you the final installment of Lights, Camera, Houston. As Deborah will talk some Houston folks who have a vested interest in seeing the film business expand right here in the city of Houston. You bet. I think we'd all like to see it expand right here in Houston. Not only because some of us make it to the movies. That's pretty exciting. Yes, indeed. And we also uh, spend about as much money here on Live at Five for stunt doubles <laughs> and those sort of special effects. Huh? But no explosions, <laughs> we promise you. It's been a good series, though. Real exciting all yeah. this week. Thanks, Deborah. And tonight, uh, maybe a little explosion over at the summit. Maybe the Rockets' offense will explode. What do you think? We well, yeah, let's hope so. We certainly don't want them to bomb out. We'll be back in just a moment. At the moment, there is no one to bar her way. John Lawrence, ABC News, London. And that is our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night. Wednesday. Have we met before in another life? Robert Guillaume goes out on a limb with a new secretary. I'm about to have an out-of-body experience. Don't hurt yourself. Then Hayden makes the big decision. I think I am, Christine. I gotta tell you, I really think I'm ready. To go steady. <laughs> Coach, it's an all-new Wednesday. And coming up this evening here on Eyewitness News, a whole new dimension to fighting drug crime in Houston's housing projects. I'm Liz Exen at CUNY Homes Public Housing Project, which is targeted for a drug cleanup. I'll explain in a live report. I'm Christy Myers. The United Way puts the star of hope on probation. I'm Stephen Govain at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Weather here is beginning to turn a little unfavorable, but there's still a good chance the shuttle Atlantis will be go for launch tomorrow. I'll have a live report. I'm Deborah Wrigley. Some homegrown movie talent wants to see the local film business start rolling again. Next on Lights, Camera, Houston. All right. These stories and a lot more next on Eyewitness News. What keeps the steak and ale legend blazing on? Word of mouth. Steak and ale. For over 20 years, the legend of steak. If you're affected by it, it's on Donahue. A jogger is attacked in Central Park and remains unconscious. What caused this heinous crime, and what should we do about it next time? Thursday morning at 10, here on 13. You're watching Channel 13, KTRK-TV Houston, number one in Texas. Eyewitness News with Dave Ward and Sheriff Fryer. Marvin Zindler's Action 13. Bob Allen has sports. Now, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Good evening, friends. Illegal drug abuse and the violence and terror that go along with it have residents in two Houston public housing projects looking for help this evening. Drug dealers have turned those apartments into nightly battlegrounds, and city and county attorneys want some action. Liz Exon is standing by at CUNY Homes Apartments, one of the areas targeted by those attorneys for cleanup. Liz? Yes, yeah, Cheryl, I'm right in the middle of the CUNY Homes project here. It's in the old Third Ward area. Now, residents say that drug dealers come out in this area at night, forcing honest citizens back indoors. Mary Johnson, Chanel Johnson, and Chanel's little girl represent three generations tied to the CUNY Homes project. When I was coming up, the CUNY home was fun. It was no drugs. It was none of but, but not most of everybody they put in a CUNY home got something to do with drugs. 
And while the mothers and children roam freely in the housing project during the day, it's a different story at nightfall. Well, I sit on my porch, you know, but at night by 8.30 or 9, we go in the house. Why? Because it's weird. And staying inside can be stifling. They have no air conditioning, but their walls are their only shield to try and protect their children. Do you see a lot of drug traffic out here? Yeah, but I stay out of that because I don't want my children knowing what drugs are, and I don't want them around it. The single mothers seem the most bothered. Many of the men seem indifferent. Do you feel safe out here? Yeah, it's okay, you know, but we have violence every, every once in a while, but other than that, there ain't been too much violence out here. They've been okay. Tell me what it's like to live here. It's pretty good. But a minute ago, you were complaining. Mm-hmm. About that crack stuff out here. Most of the worst thing, kids can't play out here no more. Now, a meeting is scheduled for tomorrow morning to discuss the drug problem here as well as the drug problem at the Clayton Homes Project. City and county attorneys will be meeting with public housing officials to explore their options. Some of the things they're considering uh, would be curfews, resident IDs, and also getting some off-duty police officers in here uh, at night to uh, check the area, check the residents to see if they belong here. Dave, Shara? When you say resident IDs, do they believe that the drug, drug dealers live in those complexes or do they think they're coming in from the outside? Now, they do say they do believe that it is a mixture, that some people actually live here and do deal drugs, but they also believe that people are coming in from the outside. I even came out here with some police officers last week, and they would stop people, ask them, do you live here? No, they didn't. Uh, at midnight, uh, someone mingling in this area, you've got to wonder what they're doing in this area that late at night. Liz, what about Clayton Holmes? Is it about the same, better, worse? Well, I went out there today. Uh, I interviewed some of the people in that area. It's a much smaller complex. They have had some problems, but there weren't that many complaints over there. I talked to some long-term residents that said uh, it's something that they can live with, not near the complaints that I've heard over here. Okay, very good. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. More problems this evening for Houston's largest shelter for homeless men.